Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and this is part two of two videos that I'm making which is looking at using the half tone filter. Now the inspiration for this particular video is this Photoshop tutorial done by Photoshop Supply where you have this Asian schoolgirl with a gun and then you have the bang so you're making the comic book, sort of black and white comic book image with the only colour is in the writing. Um, the background can be got, You can. there's links to the background here but um, you can, this comes from pixabay.com so that, this one is easily accessible but the Asian schoolgirl with the gun is um, comes from a stock image supplier which you'd have to pay for so I tried to look around for something similar of someone holding a gun um, and I came up with this soldier image which it was a bit too detailed it wasn't you know the way I did it the way I adapted the Photoshop tutorial it was a bit too detailed so I tried it again and I much prefer this version because it is a less detailed um, adaptation of that image but I was a bit sort of worried about this gun imagery so I've been looking at trying to do other images and I'm going to try and repeat this one here but maybe not have the half tone over the person in this particular like I did in this particular trial run and other versions that I've tried was this one here which I, I do like and I did think about doing this one and another version that I tried was this one here where I used the circular half turn image. So you know it can be used in a multitude of sort of backgrounds and foregrounds and whether you put the half tone on the main figure is up to you. But I do like the adding of the text in colour so that it helps the text stand out. So I will reset all these things and I'll be back in a little while. Okay, like I said, this tutorial is a Photoshop tutorial and you can follow along um, and try and adapt it yourself in your own way if you want to. I will add a link to this in the description for this video. But the images I'm going to use both come from Pixabay, are free to download and I've downloaded the largest version of this. Um, for better sort of ability to have the pixels converted into half tones because they're sort of more pixels to work with it's a higher DPI um, I had some people make comments on the first video that it didn't look so good but that might have been because their resolution for their images wasn't quite as high and the other image okay, is this background of this chap kneeling down in this um, old station so the links to those images and the tutorial would be in the description for this video so starting with the person image and first thing I'm going to do is to select this image now I'm going to use a selection brush if you prefer to be very precise and you could use a pen tool or whatever your favorite selection tool is but mainly for speed I'm going to use a selection brush but also as it's a cartoon comic type image it really doesn't need to be 100% perfect so I'm going to quickly just make this selection of this chap here I'm going to have to take subtract some of this in a minute. Right, I've got most of that up there. Alright, that's got. So I'm going to come up to subtract. Just. And then. Just nibble away at that bit there. Right, I think one last bit I just need to add back. Should be that, I think. 
Just seen a little bit there. I think that's pretty much it. I'll just go to a quick mask and make sure that everything I want selected is pretty much there. I'm not missing anything from the middle. So I'm happy with that selection. So I'm just going to press Control and J, and I think it's Command and J on a Mac to put that selection onto a new layer. So if I turn off the background, as you can see, that is that new layer. I will press Control and D to get rid of the selection area. You could, if you wanted, sort of just tidy up a bit, but like I said, it's going to be a comic type image, so I can't really see the need to be that 100% perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this new layer that I've made, go to copy, and I will come back to this image here and I will just paste that in and then position it how I want it. I will resize this a bit I think. Let's put it about there. Now just for now I'm just going to hide that background so we're just working on the Im uh, layer with the person on it and this is we're going to change it into sort of the drawing or cartoon effect now if you have your own way of converting something into a drawing cartoon effect you could use that if you want more detail than what I'm going to give it you know you might prefer that option but I'm just going to add a threshold adjustment and the adjustments are found with this half black and white circle here I'll just click on that and come up to threshold now depending on your image it may either be all white or you may just have a few flecks of color uh, black I should say not color I'm just going to move the slider to the right until I get an image that I'm happy with and it's going to be somewhere around the 20% mark in fact 20% is pretty good I quite like that so let me just shut that down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide those layers the adjustment and the background in fact I could have merged that in to that layer but I'm going to unhide the background and we're going to change that next so what I'm going to do to this is add another adjustment and this time we're going to go for the gradient map and I'm just going to click on this green one that's in the middle and click and drag it downwards and it will disappear so we're just left with the two nodes the left hand side of this graph is the shadows and the right hand side is the highlights so we're going to change the highlights which is what it's set on at the moment, which is the blue colour here. I'm going to set this to white. And then click on the node at the other end. And change that to blacks. Then I'm going to reinsert the middle node. And I'm going to move it to the about 35% area 34% is close enough and then I'm going to just close that down then I'm going to add another adjustment to this and this time we're going to go with brightness and contrast and the Contrast, I'm going to move this up to about 70% and the brightness I'm going to move downwards or to the left to about 20% roughly, 20, 21 that's close enough. And then I will close that down. Now, then I'm going to 
right click on this brightness and contrast layer and come down to merge visible which will make a a merged layer of all those ones below but then I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to color burn which might make it quite a bit too dark so I'm just going to lower down that opacity so it's about 65 percent so it's just a sort of much grungier but not too dark an image so next thing I want to do is to add the half tone effect to the background um, I don't think I want to add it to the person as well I just want it on the background so again I will right click that and merge visible so that I'm going to be adding the halftone filter to this new layer so I've got filters colors and down to halftone it starts off on dots but I mean if you want to use the circular option or the line option it's up to you whichever you prefer but I'm going to stick with dots and then I'm just going to decrease the cell size quite a bit and then tinker with the contrast let's come down to now the trouble with this particular filter is it doesn't happen so much if you, it might have been better to have used the live filter because um, halftone filter is available there um, probably what I should have done because I found with the live filter what you see on screen is pretty much what you get but if you use the filter from the filter thing I have found not every time but on quite a few occasions what you see on the screen once you click apply it, it can end up looking a lot different to what you think it will because if I go down too far I might have to type this in let's try this at 10 so you can't see the dots there as a quick test I'm going to click apply see before I couldn't see the dots and now I've applied it I can now see the half tone effect and on 10 it's not too bad it, it is there so I'm going to leave that on 10 and just as a test I'm going to hide that and I'm going to come back to this image uh, layer below and I'm going to merge visible again and then we'll try that with a live filter and come down to half tone which would get, you know, gives you the same options let's try that on 10 and I can't remember what the contrast was on what I did before but yeah see again it does look like there's no dots there at all and if I click merge you have the same effect yeah so it is very hard to use this filter knowing not knowing what it will look like once you click the apply or the merge because it's pretty much the same effect it doesn't always happen it depends on how big the dots are that you pick or what have you but just be aware that that will happen so let me delete that one I don't need two versions of that layer so I had this half tone background here so now I can make my chap um, visible now what I am going to do I'm going to double click on this threshold layer and merge it down into the background because what I want to do is I want to add an effect to this so I'm going to click on the FX button and click on outline to put a tick in that click on the word outline and I'm going to give it a colored outline I'm going to make it red you don't have to do this it's just something that I like to do on what I've done 
and I'm just going to raise this up just to give that hint of colour around the chap that isn't in the background so basically that is like the end of the tutorial as far as doing this sort of black and white comic image but then you just if you want to make it a comic you want the text so I'm going to go with artistic text and I'm going to make the inner colour a yellow and I'm going to make the stroke colour a fairly bright red and I'm going to start with I'm going to start with a fairly small width for the stroke and start, start with 0.6 I can change that in a minute and then you just want the particular font you want to use now in all the ones I've been using on my tests I've been using attack attack font which I quite like it looks very cartoony and so let's start it about here and let's try um, something a bit topical especially here in England So let me highlight that and then I can then increase that red outline. It's going to go with about 7.5. Come to the move tool and let's just put it up there. And then we're going to add some half tone to this. So make sure that this is the layer that is highlighted again come up to filter colors half tone this time we're going to I want to keep the color so I'm going to come down to color and then it's just a case of lowering the the contrast or the, and the cell size to get a look that you like now again like before it's a bit hit and miss as to what it would look like after you click apply I mean it doesn't look too bad to me there hopefully it will stay pretty much the same when I click apply in fact that looks quite a bit better it's made the dots a bit darker inside the yellow so that is the end of the tutorial thank you for watching Hopefully you will learn something from this and this is the last in my little set looking at the half tone filter. Thank you and goodbye.